So Wednesday's complimentary play on the Toronto Raptors failed to get the job done as a double-digit favorite at Phoenix, but I've still won 26 of my last 40 complimentary plays in the NFL. I'm on a 12-3 and run over the past four weeks with the freebies. I'm going to give you some observations for the total for tonight's game between the Broncos and the Colts and an official free play on the college basketball game between Southern Cal and Santa Clara. You know, I like to have a lot of fun here with the video reports, but just a personal reflection here. Uh, earlier today, I happened to be on the phone with one of the handicappers here at the site, a longtime friend, Chris Jordan, and he made mention of the fact that a handicapper that was here at the sites probably 13, 14 years ago um, had passed away back in May and I was not aware of it, uh, succumbed to cancer, such an insidious disease, uh, left behind two sons and a wife, and uh, 54 years old, so young. Um, you know, I sometimes reflect, and it doesn't seem like I started these sites 15 years ago. Hell, it doesn't seem like I've been doing this for 20-plus years, but time just goes by because, to me, this is still fun. And yet that damn disease just keeps popping up. I mean, it cost me my father, cost my wife, her father, her sister just a year ago. Cost me my best friend. Uh, God, January 16th will be 29 years since my best friend, a uh, guy who was the closest thing to a brother I ever had, left behind a, not even a one-year-old daughter at the time. And uh, the guy who really, uh, he and his wife, responsible for and making me stay in this business and giving me my biggest break and getting me to move to Atlanta to take over a, uh, uh, become a uh, editor of a uh, then uh, gambling magazine that was being created, which eventually led me into the 900 telephone business, which I eventually transitioned many years later into this internet business. Uh, without them, I'm not sure uh, if I ever would have taken that step to the dark side, as I like to call the gambling business. I'm sure that I would have uh, continued my pursuit of uh, a radio TV career because that's the path I'd taken the previous eight years working in television and uh, as a as sports writer. So, um, boy, it just, uh, uh, you know, I got to tell you, it really shook me today when I heard that. It just, uh, it was somebody I had not thought of in a number of years, and it just, uh, what can I tell you, it just really shook me. I had nobody else to share that with, guys, so... You're the closest thing to anybody here. The house is empty. Nobody else is around. Nobody else to talk to. So you're my friends. What can I tell you? So uh, let's talk about uh, what's going on here. Um, uh, Brad Wilton, unfortunately, uh, finally lost a play last night after winning seven out of eight. Winner number eight out of nine. He fell short last night with his 109 play. Number four in a row with uh, Boise State. Uh, a great game, but the Broncos fell short last night. But uh, hey, what a run he has been on since he came back to the site. The big play tonight would be Matt Rivers with another blank check release, the 20th ever blank check NFL release of his career again. I created these sites a little over 15 years ago. This is the 20th ever blank check release in the NFL, he is 6-1-1 one one with these plays after capping a 3-0 sweep last weekend, last Friday, first college blank check play of the year, Arizona State over St. John's. Saturday, his college football total winner, Army and Navy under. Sunday, blank check winner, Carolina outright over Minnesota. You got him off over half price off. Same thing goes tonight. Blank checker on Denver and Indianapolis. You get it for over half price off by using the coupon code blank, B-L-A-N-K. Um, let me talk about this game. Now, Denver, obviously the game is, the side selection is my best bet tonight, okay? And the one thing that you are going to hear incessantly on tonight's um, pregame show and throughout the game is how the Broncos are coming in here with the number one defense in the NFL. Now, listen, I like stats. If you, matter of fact, when we talk about the college basketball free pick here in a minute, you're going to talk, you're going to hear me talk about certain stats, RPI, Ken Palm stats, adjusted offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency, et cetera. But you know, stats are somewhat misleading. What's that great thing? Numbers never figure, or no, numbers never lie and liars never, numbers never lie and liars never figure, and liars never figure. Is that, that the cliche? I may have had that wrong, but we'll move forward. Um, and you're going to hear a lot of people say, yeah, Broncos bringing the number one total defense coming into this game, number one defense coming into this game. 
But what they don't tell you is how misleading that stat is. Oh, yeah, it's great that the Broncos bring in the number one defense. But let's qualify that statement. Yes, number one in terms of what? Giving up yards per game? Absolutely. I'll grant you. They're giving up a little under 281 yards a game. But is that the number you see on the scoreboard that determines whether or not you're going to win the lose the game? Is that the number that counts? Absolutely not. The number that counts is this. The Denver Broncos have the number 24 scoring defense. So the fact that they have the number one total defense, the fact that they have the number two pass defense, and the fact that they have, oh God, let me just look it up real quick here. Uh, what's their run defense? Uh, ranked number four in the NFL in terms of stopping the run. These are all inconsequential. The only number that you should really be concerned with tonight is that they have the number 24 scoring defense. They ain't mentioning that on ESPN and the pregame show. They aren't mentioning that probably during the broadcast tonight. They probably aren't. But the fact is this. The Broncos may good, be good at limiting the number of yards the opponent racks up, but they ain't stopping anybody because the Broncos are giving up 24.2 points a game. Now listen, the Colts have an acknowledged bad defense, but the Colts are number 31 in scoring defense. They're giving up 26.4 points a game. Guys, you can do the math. The Colts are only giving up two and a half points more a game than the Broncos, the number one defense in the NFL. That's how misleading sometimes these stats are. And a lot of times I think people bet the over-under according to these type of misleading stats. Let me give you another one that's a misleading stat. When people talk about the Broncos have the number two pass defense, again, yes, they are giving up 191.2 yards a game. Yes, Von Miller, that's pass rush. They have 30 sacks. But that secondary is one of the worst in terms of getting picked on. It's been shredded, not only giving up 60.8% completions, but 26 touchdowns, just eight interceptions. I'm sorry. The Colts pass defense is ranked 30th. Why? Because yards per game, they're giving up almost 258 yards a game. But their secondary, 19 touchdowns yielded, 11 interceptions. Now, only 20 sacks, 10 less sacks. Don't put the pressure on opposing quarterbacks. But unequivocally, their secondary hasn't been torched and scorched as much as the Broncos have. So again, you have to look at the numbers. The only true number, when you hear somebody talking about how a defense has performed, is the run defense. Because the run defense is a number based on the yards given up per game. There, the Broncos are giving up 89.5 yards. And then the only thing that, the only caveat is, the most important number in terms of the run defense is look at the yards per carry. It's not how many yards per game a defense gives up. Because listen, you'll find often in the NFL stats, you'll see a team, even in college football, you'll see a team that's great in the pass defense and lousy in the run defense. Why? Why pass on the team? Because if you can run the ball on them, why not just run it? Well, in this particular case, the Broncos truly do have a good run defense. They're only giving up 3.3 yards per carry. Now, when I look at this particular contest here tonight, and I'm looking at the total in this game, and let me just give you an accurate price here. What is the latest number on this game? I'm looking at a total that's right around 40 and a half. The problem that makes this game so tough to handicap is twofold in terms of the total. You have Trevor Simeon, who has two three-interception games on the road this year. And if you look at his home-road split, there is no comparison. At home, he's completing almost 62% of his passes with nine touchdowns and four interceptions. On the road, he's only completing about 57% of his passes with three touchdowns and nine interceptions. Remember that debacle at Miami just two weeks ago? You have a new offensive coordinator once they fired Mike McCoy, Bill Musgrove, who they are one and two in the games in which he's taken over the offense, who believes in running the ball. Whether or not they can effectively run the ball or not is inconsequential. They couldn't run the ball with any success against the Jets last week. They only averaged 2.2 yards per carry, but they continued to pound the ball. And they ran the ball 38 times. Listen, when their pass-run split has favored the run more than the pass, they are 4-0 this season. They only have four wins this season. Guess what? 
and the four wins, that's when they run the ball. I'm sure they're going to try to run the ball more tonight. Well, if they run the ball, that means they're going to run more time off the clock. The Colts, I don't know what the hell this team's going to do tonight. I don't think they're going to be able to effectively pass the ball. So I would lean toward the under. I don't see this being a high-scoring game. So if you force me to bet the game in terms of the total, based on all those stats I just gave you, despite the fact the Broncos give up a lot of points, I would lean toward the under. But again, the official complimentary play, I would go with Southern Cal minus the 15 points at home tonight against Santa Clara. And I know Southern Cal has certainly struggled. Look at what happened last Friday night at the Staples Center against Oklahoma. It was a game that they lost 85-83. It was a deceiving final score because they rallied from an 18-point second-half deficit despite 17 turnovers to make a game of it right at the end of the buzzer. Now, they lost their prior game to SMU by 17 points, a game in which they also committed 17 turnovers. The game before that, they lost to Texas A&M by 16 points, a game which they couldn't hit the broad side of the barn. They shot only 28%. Now, they had started 4-0 and they were a top-10 team, but they played a bunch of cupcakes. Fullerton State and North Dakota State, Vanderbilt, a bad Vanderbilt team, Lehigh. Now, Santa Clara is coming off an 87-84 home loss to Portland State, a game in which they were up by 10 points at halftime. They had won their previous two games against Arkansas, Pine Bluff, and Northern Arizona after a 1-5 and start. They have failed to cover six of their last seven games. The numbers that you have to be concerned with here, RPI strength of schedule. USC is ranked 52nd in the latest RPI releases. Santa Clara, the Broncos, 345 among 351 Division I teams. This is the Broncos' first true road game, and they failed on neutral courts going 0-2 as well. Meanwhile, if you look at the Ken Palm stats, according to KenPalm.com, Southern Cal is the 30th best team in the nation. Again, statistical analysis, Santa Clara is ranked 218th. And in terms of offensive efficiency per 100 possessions, Southern Cal averages 112.7 points a game. That's important because Santa Clara defensively gives up 107 points a game per 100 possessions. And in overall terms of points per game, they actually allow 75 a game. They're ranked 251 in terms of their defensive efficiency. And when you look at strength of schedule, just pure strength of schedule, USC 26th, 344 for Santa Clara, 7th from the bottom in all of Division I basketball. So I think that Southern Cal is looking for a break. Well, listen, Andy Enfield's team needs a breakout performance. This is a talented team. It's just played some really good competition. Santa Clara isn't a good team. That's why I'm worth looking for Southern Cal to explode tonight and put away Santa Clara. And that's your official complimentary play. Good luck, everyone.